Hi, MRK here and welcome back to Unreal Engine 5.4 Preview. And today we're gonna continue the topic of state trees with smart objects. So before we um, start this video, uh, look in the description and I'm gonna link there uh, two videos. First one being uh, 5.4 updates to state trees and second one being the first video uh, I made about state trees with smart objects uh, because I'm not gonna repeat <laughs> everything I said in those previous videos. I'm just gonna, you know, uh, get to the point. I'm of course gonna remind you some things you should know along the way, but uh, yeah, sh you should watch them first uh, so you have that complete knowledge. And uh, why am I making a part two of, of this video? Well, state trees with smart objects. Uh, because uh, Epic released um, something called Gameplay Interactions and that plugin, which is new to uh, new in 5.4, uh, it basically enables us to use state trees as um, part of smart objects. So in the uh, in my first video about this topic, I, I just told you how to enable uh, and how to use smart objects from the state trees, but there was actually no way to use state trees in that smart object. And now with this plugin, we actually can do that. So uh, to enable this plugin, uh, we can go to just you know plugins, search for uh, gameplay interactions. Here is this one. Uh, it's of course experimental, but the previous one was also experimental. So I guess just play around, don't use in shipping. And uh, the previous one was uh, smart objects, uh, gameplay behavior, smart objects. Uh, so if you want to follow along, just you know, enable smart objects, gameplay behavior, smart objects, and then state trees, state tree graph. I'm not sure actually what that does. Uh, I tried to find this, but for now I didn't find a, any use for this. So you just need gameplay state tree and state tree. And uh, yeah, I think that that's it. Um, and let's, uh, let's start. So what am I using uh, for this video? What is the setup? The setup is basically what I did uh, in my video about state trees 5.4. Uh, 5.4 updates and uh, I just added some smart objects to the scene. So um, one thing I added is of course this uh, blueprint actor, it's called PPSO item which has two slots. Uh, it kinda looks a bit different than stock uh, <laughs> smart objects but it's because I tried to test other things. But for now uh, it's not important. The only thing important is just those big yellow circles, nothing else. And um, okay, let's move on. Next thing I added is, um, what did I add? In that SO item, I added smart object, which is using smart object definition. It's currently kind of empty, but we'll get to that in a moment. And uh, how did we do this uh, previously? Uh, previously, we had to do something like uh, default behavior definitions, you just add a plus or you know, add a specific definition for, uh, for such slot, so slot one, slot two, or whatever, however many slots you have, you just add them here or just use a default one for uh, every slot. So let's just uh, do this and you would pick gameplay behavior, smart object behavior definition. And then you would pick uh, either a, a simple gameplay behavior config or a custom one that you could possibly make. Uh, if you wanted to use any parameters, then you would have to uh, use a, a custom one. So I'm gonna use a GBC test, which is a custom class I made. Of course, everything in blueprints. And we can see we have a test parameter, we can pick a behavior class and in that class, well, let's maybe start from config. Config looks like this, so just 
you know, we added a parameter, we use it kind of like uh, a data management class, and in a GB test, we just save that parameter, it doesn't have to be instanceable all this, I just tested if it would show up in the uh, SO definition, but it didn't, so you, <laughs> you actually cannot do this. Do this, and I just cast to take out parameters and maybe do something else. So this was the old way, right? And um, the uh, issue is that in the SO, so here, you cannot actually uh, use multiple um, multiple definitions or behavior classes you would have to use multiple uh, configs to actually use those classes. And the parameters is, uh, is something I don't necessarily like because I think it should be uh, accessible straight in the behavior class, but whatever. Uh, we are talking now about gameplay interactions and how you do the gameplay interactions. I don't actually know what is why is it called gameplay interactions? Because it's just um, a method to uh, allow AI to use in the smart objects. So it's not exactly gameplay interactions. I, I think they meant uh, there will be some more changes, some more additions that uh, will enable us to uh, expand this further. But for now, uh, we just have this. So let's remove this, let's add another behavior definition. And to make a new behavior definition that is actually a state tree, you will have to go to uh, artificial intelligence state tree. And now we have a new schema, which is called gameplay interaction state tree schema. Previously, uh, we just had component schema, uh, which was a state tree that is attached to an actor. Now we have this, so make a new state tree with that uh, class, and you will get um, a new state tree that you can, you know, um, edit and actually use the state tree uh, to uh, script that behavior. And we can see in the context, we have a bunch more items. Uh, we have, of course, a smart object actor class in addition to context actor class, so pick both. Uh, and then we can add parameters. Uh, I added a new kind of variable here. You don't have to uh, look at this for now. It, it can be just, you know, a, a, a normal Boolean. So let's make a Boolean test uh, bool. And that test bool, if we uh, compile, <coughs> We don't have a binding. Oh yeah. Okay, let's bind this. And uh, yeah, now we have a parameter that all of our uh, states can use, which is, I think, much more convenient and much better to use. And uh, when we go to SO and pick our gameplay interaction smart object behavior definition, <laughs> then we can pick just a state tree which is very, very cool. And then we pick that STGA, GI or whatever. I, I guess I just named it like state tree gameplay interactions, gameplay interaction. <laughs> it is, those names are getting longer and longer, I swear. It's, it's gonna be a whole poem in in a couple of years, <laughs> lol. Uh, and now when we pick a state tree, we don't have to pick anything else. It basically acts as a, uh, config, config in in previous way, and uh, yeah, we pass parameters, and those behaviors are just STTs in uh, our new state tree. So how does uh, the STT look? Well, it's this. So when we enter state, I just play a montage, which is a jump, and just finish task. This is uh, don't mind this for now. <laughs> And of course, we have access to all of those variables that we can use and maybe do something else with those. For now, I don't need to use them. Uh, so I just play a montage to, uh, to check if this is working. 
And uh, okay, we have this hooked up. In the PPA, we are using the same state tree from our video about 5.4 updates. So it's AI base. Uh, AI base is going to uh, roam, either roam or follow, is basically random uh, with chance like 50 50. So if we go to follow, we just follow. If we go to roam, we have also uh, a random. Uh, state, we either go to random position or we just find and use random smart object. And uh, this STT is basically um, just gonna show you uh, it's this one. It's a little bit more complicated, but nothing you didn't use, uh, nothing you wouldn't know about if you watched my video about state trees and smart objects. So uh, just a quick recap, we make a filter, find smart objects uh, in an actor. We could also use a smart object subsystem uh, and just use subsystem to, to find smart objects. And then we would have to make a, an, a box, which is uh, you know an area and just use that array. But I kind of you know have one actor, so I just find state trees, all smart objects in that actor. And just mark as claimed uh, and move to and use smart object. And that's that's it. Compile, save, uh, and I use this in, in the row. So when we uh, basically uh, run this STT, we go to this state tree because it's marked here, right? This is the state tree we want to use for that slot behavior. And in that state tree, we are just using the STT used as O, which is this. Play montage, jump, whatever. And uh, now that we have modular state trees and we actually have state trees as behaviors in smart objects, uh, the transition to straight succeeded comes very handy because uh, in the 5.4 uh, state tree updates, I just made a new state, which is like go back and the go back would be, uh, what is it? Uh, linked asset and pick state tree AA base, whatever, right? So this is actually unnecessary because uh, we can just do on transition, transition to tree succeeded. And this will automatically go back to the last tree or the parent state tree uh, we were using before. So very useful, uh, very nice. Uh, so the same thing I am using here in AI follow, in AI ROM, this is just uh, in uh, tree succeeded on white. And the same here I am using, same thing I am using here in SO default. So transition to tray, tray three succeeded. This goes back uh, probably to AI ROM, then it goes to the weight, and this tree succeeded is basically going back to AI base, uh, which is you know starting over from the root and picking appropriate states. Uh, so let's uh, test if all of this is working. Let's play, and we have yeah find random. You're jumping, F move to state, waiting, move to state, waiting, find random jumping, yeah. So it's either finding a random position uh, or just uh, finding a random smart object and using it. So that's uh, how the gameplay interactions work. And uh, that's how you use it, How uh, that's how you set it up and um, yeah, um, give me a moment and we'll uh, make another, uh, we'll jump to another topic, which is kind of off topic, but not exactly. So if you just, you're just interested in state trees with smart objects, this is the end of the video. And if you want to stay and listen further, some speculations and uh, some rambling, then, then feel free to stay. Uh, I'm gonna actually close those state trees because we don't need them anymore. Uh, but 
in the um, uh, wait a moment okay I'm back uh, well you kind of didn't see this because I paused the paused the video but uh, I just had to find the entry from uh, epic that says uh, something about gameplay interactions because uh, gameplay interactions, first thing it does is enabling us uh, to use state trees as behaviors in smart objects, right? But the second part, when you look at this, uh, is um, we are using state trees and smart objects together with a contextual anim scene, among others, which uh, they didn't tell us about what among others mean, but we know contextual anim scene. And this is probably part of some um, extension <laughs> of state trees and smart objects, which uh, we can actually make, but I do not, do not know how to use yet. So this is kind of a note for you guys, if you're interested uh, in, uh, you know, digging deeper and seeing what's up in the engine. Uh, you can enable a plugin that is called uh, context, contextual animation, and then you can make something like um, contextual anim scene. And that anim scene looks basically like this. Uh, I, I'm probably not going to make another video about this because I don't know how this is going to work <laughs> and how to use them. Maybe if Epic makes a good documentation, then maybe I will make another video. But for now, you know, I'm just kind of hinting you that, that this exists and it's probably going to be used along with state trees and smart objects. So, yeah, uh, how do we use this? Uh, I know a few things. I don't know a lot, but things I do know is that you need a data asset and that data asset maybe let's make a, a new contextual animation so we you know start fresh I'm calling it ta uh, cas because you know contextual anim uh, scene and let's call this uh, t2 and that t2 uh, just open t1 again T2 looks like this, so we don't actually have anything, but we have role asset ability. I mean, not ability, slot for roles asset, which we can uh, make by going to miscellaneous and data asset and picking context uh, contextual anim roles asset. And when we do this, I'm gonna just name it car2. Uh, we can add roles, so we can, you know, make a new entry, we can make two entries, maybe uh, a, a, a bench, venture, and maybe a benchy, <laughs> whatever, I'm just making uh, words up. And we have a, a mesh to component, something, we can mark if this is a character or not. Then we have another options for, for a capsule. And okay, this is a, a small little data asset that we can now uh, plug into roles asset, right? And now that we uh, made those, well, made the data asset and plugged this in, we can pick a primary role, which doesn't do anything. And to actually do something, we have to pick new anim set. And then we have the data with our roles and we can pick montages for, for those roles, for some reason. We can pick a movement mode, we can pick optional, is this optional, and name the uh, this section. Let's name it um, test uh, second, second test, whatever. And this spawns two, uh, two characters that are, I guess, linked to the anim montages that we added. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the end of my knowledge. I tried to use this uh, in uh, user so, and it has actually a few nodes, but I don't exactly know what to do with those nodes. 
I mean, I guess I can curry, I can uh, check what is in that scene, but it's nothing that I couldn't do straight in the state tree. Or, you know, like I can pass those informations. Like, I don't know why this exists for now, but uh, yeah, maybe you guys are, uh, you know, more um, persistent <laughs> and you'll figure out why this is and how to use it and maybe is this useful and maybe we just have to use uh, maybe we just have to wait for epic uh, to update the documentation and actually tell us more about this because uh, for now i i don't know why is this <laughs> Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's it from me for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, write a comment. Maybe you know something I don't about uh, contextual animus in, or maybe uh, among others. What does this mean? And maybe I'll make a new follow-up video about those topics if we learn new learn something new uh, so that's it from me see you next time bye bye <laughs>